Hey everyone, this is Tony Day. Today I'm going to just do a response to this question, and I gave a very long answer um, below it, but uh, I want to talk about this because I don't, um, I'll just explain. Okay, so um, this question is, I have Nikon D3400. I have two prime lenses, one Nik Nikon AFS DX Nikkor 35 f1.8G, and a Nikkor 50 f1.8G prime. I'm assuming that one is a full frame lens. Uh, I want to get the results like a full frame camera. Kindly provide me the answer of below questions. What can I do to get the result matching full frame DSLR? Exactly what equipment should I purchase? And if there is any specific booster, please provide the exact name so that I can buy. Okay, so this is a what do I buy question, and I don't really like these. Uh, because there's, well, there's a lot of reasons. Mostly it's because of specifics and there's like a bunch of things that you're assuming or I'm going to have to assume uh, in order to really answer a question faithfully and truthfully and be helpful. So uh, I'm going to break this down and I'm not picking on you, um, but I want to use this as an example of uh, how, why you need to be careful when you ask these kinds of questions, especially to people who want to just sell you stuff. Um, because it's important to fully understand what you're getting into when you're going to buy or rent or whatever it is you're going to do to get things. Um, first of all, I have Nikon D3400. Well, I'm not a Nikon person, so I'm assuming um, this is a crop sensor camera since you're saying you want a full frame camera result. Um, so this is a, it's a 3400. My assumption is that this is a single lens reflex camera as well. What that means is that you have an SLR in your hands. So a speed booster is not something that you're going to be able to get um, because the only reason really why speed boosters have become a thing now is because you have mirrorless cameras that can adapt uh, SLR lenses like a Nikon F mount lens, like uh, one of them that you have, which is a 50 f 1.8G, and I'll explain about the 35 in a minute. Um, so for your 3400, you see how wide this is? Okay, here's where the lens goes, here's where the sensor is. This is uh, a, an SLR, there's a mirror that goes in here, and it flips up when it takes a picture. And in order for you to see what you're shooting, it reflects an image into the viewfinder, right? So that's how your camera works, it's an SLR. This is a mirrorless camera down here, you see how short this is? Okay, when you adapt a SLR lens, it's like way out here, okay? So in that space, that dead space where it used to be the mirror is where they put the optics for a focal reducer or a speed booster, which are essentially the same thing. The speed booster is a Metabones trademark, I believe. So um, because your camera is this, it's a DSLR, you can't, unless somebody knows of a company that like installs these instead of a mirror or something, a focal reducer in this space, you cannot just get a focal reducer for your camera. Okay, you need to get you need to first buy a mirrorless camera, then you need to buy the speed booster, which to me is not a good use of your money. Okay, not not really. Okay, um, here's another example. You see, uh, here's the Sony. This is a um, a uh, probably an A7, um, and it's mirrorless. This is a DSLR. Okay, you see how far away the lens sits. This is because this lens has to be this far away in order to project the image circle and for it to operate the way it's supposed to. Okay. So this is a, this is why you can get a focal reducer with your camera. You can't really do that. Okay. Um, you have a 35 1.8, which is a DX lens and a 50 F 1.8, which is a, a full frame lens. So even if you were, let's imagine if you could get a focal reducer for this camera, the, um, this DX lens, does not project a large enough image circle for a full frame camera, I'm assuming, because it's made for a 1.5x crop. Okay, not only that, but these two lenses are, in my opinion, the biggest problem you have in your gear. The camera's whatever, you know, it, not every camera is great at doing video, but as long as you make good content and it's shot well, it has good lighting and all those things, usually it doesn't matter that much. But you've got two prime lenses that are both normals. Okay, how do I know that? Well, if we take 35, multiply by the uh, crop factor, okay, so we can look at it in stills terms, uh, 135 stills uh, FOV terms, you got about a 50 millimeter. That's in the normal range. Then you've got a 50 times 1.5. That gives you a normal telephoto, okay? So the 50 is fine. You can keep that and everything. 
but that 35 is not really helping you, okay? It is too long for a crop sensor camera if you only have a two prime solution for your shooting. If you're only going to do two primes, I recommend getting a 24 or an 18. If you want wider, go with the 18. If you want uh, longer, go with a 24 or a 23 or whatever it is that they have that's available to you to get um, that 35 millimeter ish in 135 stills terms kind of field of view. So if we took 24, multiply by 1.5, and there's a ton of 24 millimeter lenses out there, you get about a 36. This and a 75 is going to be far more useful to you than getting a full frame camera uh, field of view. Okay. So, so I strongly recommend, you know, first, if you want to go to the two prime solution, just get, you know, something like this, or if you get an 18, you'll be around a 28 millimeter. If I have my math right. Yeah, it's about 28. Okay. So 18 or 24 for your shorter lens. Okay. Uh, you want to get the result like a full frame camera. This, there, I don't know what you mean by that. If you're talking about the field of view, that's one thing. But I just want to touch on this, okay? This is like chasing the dragon. Okay, you'll never catch it. Buying stuff and trying to make it look like this is not going to make your content any better. It's not going to make you a better cinematographer. It's not going to make you a better photographer. It's not going to make you an exceptional individual. It's not going to make your friends like you. It's not going to do anything other than just look kind of different. Okay, that's all that's going to happen. I just want to make sure that's very clear. A full frame camera, as in 135 stills, field of view does not make anything that you do necessarily better. It's just different. Okay, there's nothing inherently better about a, a larger field of view like this. I know people like to argue that, but in my opinion, all this does is try to sell stuff to you. Okay, I've seen people who think that they're amazing. Um, at photography, they go and pick up a medium format camera and those uh, newer Fujis that are cheaper, then they go shoot photography and it looks no better and no worse than what they originally had with their full frame camera or with their APS-C camera. Makes no difference. Same thing with video production. It's, it's, it's usually the people who chase this kind of thing. I get it if you have like a ton of money and you're like, hey man, I'm going to shoot with that LF camera, um, RELF or whatever. I get that. And it's, it's, you know, I can get it being fun, but really this, it just, it's not what you think it is. I can, I can promise you that. Okay. Some people love it, whatever my opinion, if you want my opinion, this is not the right area to look. You've got a camera that could probably be updated. It could be a 1.5 X and you can keep, you know, these lenses if you want. There are a ton of different cameras that you could get to replace it, but this kind of thing, looking for the full frame look or whatever. It's just not, it's not worth it. And in the film world, Super 35, which is a crop from uh, 135 stills, is full frame in video production and in film production. That is the standard. There are, just think of any film you've ever seen that you loved, and the chances are it was shot on Super 35, or it might have been shot on Super 16, or something like that. The chances are that the full, the like, majority of anything you've ever seen at least the majority of that film, if not the entirety of that film, is shot on a smaller format than 135 stills, okay? And really, to get the look you should be going for is making your footage lit creatively, have it tell the story you want it to tell, and get shots that have movement and composition that blow people away. Provide me answer to the little question is what can I do to get the result matching full frame DSLR? Okay, so if you really want to push this, if you want to, to get the look of a full frame camera, which is a 135 kind of field of view, right? You want to get this extra stuff in here. The first thing is just get a full frame camera and lenses for it. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it. There's a ton of cameras out there now, relatively cheap, with a full system that you can get for it, okay? Nikon Z6, if you like Nikon, this has a 24 to 70 f4. I've never used either of these cameras before. Um, uh, there's uh, Nikon Zs, but I get really good um, feedback from talking to colleagues who have used these. 
The next uh, camera you can get is Sony a7 III. It's a decent camera for the price, especially. Um, and uh, the lens that you can get is this Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8. Uh, this, along with the a7 III, will do everything that you probably will do for a while. And E mount is not a bad mount to get lenses in because. Sony makes um, a ton of different video cameras and cinema cameras and all that kind of stuff. So um, you can use this lens on those other cameras as well. Um, if you want to talk about getting a focal reducer, honestly, by the time you buy that crop sensor camera and then you put a focal reducer on and you have to deal with all of that kind of stuff, it's probably going to end up being just as expensive for you or just as frustrating or whatever it is as just dumping what you have now and buying this other stuff. And again, like I said, that 35 will not work with a speed booster on a crop sensor camera because the image circle is too small. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that because it's a DX lens. Okay. It might, some people say, well, some crop sensor cameras can cover a larger format, but covering it does not mean that you'll get any good image quality on those edges. Sometimes the edges have to be cropped off anyway, because the edges are so bad. Okay. So Anyway, exactly what equipment should I purchase? What's your budget? Okay, I'm not picking on you, or at least I hope it doesn't seem like I'm picking on you. I just need you to understand that this is very open-ended. And anybody, if I was just like trying to sell you stuff, I would say, click this link and buy all this crap. And, you know, then I would get some money off of it. But I'm not going to do that, okay? I gave you some examples of what you could do. The Sony a7 III with the Tamron and the Nikon Z to use whatever you got. But realistically, I have no idea what, what you should purchase. I don't know where you are. I don't know how hard it is for you to get um, equipment. I don't know how hard it is for you to return things that are defective. I don't know if you have a rental place where you can just rent some stuff and try it out for yourself. I don't know those things about you. Okay, If I knew what you made, you know, maybe I could help you out. I mean, that's another thing. What kind of content do you make? Because if you make broadcast news, that's one thing. If you're going to make a short film, that's another thing. If you're going to shoot event stuff, that's another thing. Okay. If you're going to be shooting with lighting, that's one thing. If you're not going to have any lighting and it's going to be like on the spot kinds of stuff, you know, where you can't control lighting, you're going to have to use high ISO and all that crap. How would I know what you can use? How would I know what's going to be best for you? Okay, so I'm assuming that this is in regards to just getting this full frame kind of, you know, field of view. If that's the case, I already gave you the answer. Um, if there is any specific speed booster, the only speed booster that I think anybody should get is the Metabones because none of the other ones that have been out have led me to believe that those companies are doing right by their consumers because usually they have inferior optics and they have far more inferior um, quality control, and their ser their software um, is not reliable. The Viltrox, people have argued with me up and down, telling me how great the Viltrox is, and then when they try to update the firmware, it breaks, the, it breaks it and they have to go back. Or, you know, they find out that the optics really in their Viltrox is not as good as they were led to believe, okay? So, you know, Speed Booster, get the Metabones. None of the other focal reducers I've ever bought and used and had to return have been anywhere near as good as the Metabones, okay? So I hope this uh, helps you out. Um, please do not fall into the trap of thinking a full frame camera or a larger format is going to make any of your stuff any better. It just doesn't really work that way, okay? Um, all right, so uh, if you like this video, please let me know. I'm thinking about doing some more of these responses because they're a little easier than getting all the other content. I'm working on some other stuff. So uh, thanks. Um, talk to you later.